So, I got real bored and I decided to put up a video on something that I never really was able to find whenever I started working with these. Which was simply how to wire one up if you've never worked with them before. Although, technically, if you've never worked with one before and you don't know how to wire it up, you probably shouldn't be getting one and wiring it up. But that's a loophole I won't go into. Anyway, uh, basically I'm going to show you how to wire up a microwave oven transformer, how to get a nice good arc, and a little bit of something about resonant capacitance. Not too much. Just the basis of why it's good. But to begin with, get your microwave oven transformer. Mine's currently upside down because that's how I have my ground bolted down to the plate. It's just easier that way for the video. But you have your AC line. Got the two AC connected right there. Green here is the ground. Got that bolted down to the plate, which is connected to the core. Now, whenever you're bolting your ground to the core, as you notice, I got scratches all right there. They dip these whole things in enamel. So wherever you bolt to the core as a ground, or for whatever, make sure you grind off that enamel so you get good contact. So the green wire going there is the ground, which goes through the AC line. Now this white one, is my chicken stick. Nice good long PVC. Got this one rigged up for pivoting depending on which side I'm on. I always find that a ball tip is best for these things which is also why my creative little high voltage lead out here it has a ball on it just a bunch of metal parts kind of constructed together. It's nice and heavy, ain't gonna move. I got that wired up to the capacitor. But these heater leads here that come out usually right between the two cords, those you don't normally use for pulling arcs. I mean, not even normally, I've never seen anyone use them. Usually just three to eight volts used to operate the heater, miscellaneous parts on the microwave circuit board. You just kind of twist those off to the side. Note how I don't have it grounded out, just in case. Just make sure it's nice and out of the way. Or you can snip them off and hot glue them, whatever. Now, the secondary, which is a nice thick coil. Lots of windings there, it's got a lead out. That goes straight into one side of your microwave capacitor. The other side will of course be your high voltage out. As you note, I'm not currently using the diode that's normally used to connect to ground from the capacitor so it discharges rather quickly immediately when the transformer turns off. I don't want that. I like to make sure it's discharged myself and well, it's just a personal thing. But more on that in a later video. You can have some fun with those diodes with these things. This is just your basic pull out of the microwave, plug it in, see some arc. And this is, for the most part, how it's hooked up in the microwave, so really, there's not much to it. But if you're like me, like I did the first time, you got so excited you finally got a microwave, you ripped the whole thing completely apart and didn't stop to think your cunning plan all the way through. You forgot how it was all hooked together. Oh, this should show you. Now, uh, let me get my camera here situated so you can see it. I got a bunch of protective shieldings up the business end. But it's just a bunch of plastic, wood, stuff. Most of it's got black background so you can see the arc better. Yeah, it's just wall and miscellaneous junk behind it. So, nothing pretty for the video. But this should be. Single microwave oven transformer. 
single microwave oven capacitor. Powering on. Oh look, it's hard to eat. That wasn't worth all the trouble to get inside that microwave. Make sure it's bright and shiny. That's not hard. This is where we're going to go into resonance specs. If you want to learn a lot about electrical engineering, you can go off of Wikipedia all this stuff. But basically, it boils down to for every single transformer you use, you need to use two capacitors. Ideally, all of them are the exact same rating. Both of these happen to be one microfarad. That guy over there currently hooked up is a 94, I believe. So not much difference between the two as individuals. Uh, well, what you want to do is just take your two and literally run them in parallel. Same side connected to the same side. Same side connected to the same side. That way if you're looking at it, it's not two capacitors, it's just one. That's how the circuit treats it. It's just one capacitor with a currently two farad rating. But magic happens when you do that. Let me get that swapped over here. And before you touch anything, always double tap your leads, make sure everything's off, discharged, all good. Let me disconnect from the high voltage lead from the transformer and disconnect my high voltage lead out. Pull this guy away. Now then, looking at it, I'm going to do the same thing like I had it connected. On one side, I'm going to have my lead out. On the other side, I'm going to have the transformer. And since it's acting as one capacitor, doesn't matter if I plug this one here or here, same with this one, anywhere along the row is fine because it's all just one capacitor, just with multiple hookup points. Situated. Now let's get you back for prime arc viewing position. You would not believe how precariously positioned the camera is at the moment, but it works. And always UV protection. These arcs are bright, they will hurt your eyes. Over time, they will hurt them permanently. Trust me, give you a headache to boot. So even if you, all you have is just the cheapest pair of sunshades, something's better than nothing, but ideally get you some standard safety shield and UV protection. Work great. Besides, you can actually see the pretty colors instead of bright flash of light. Well, same transformer, just with two capacitors instead of one, ran in parallel as a resonance. Let's see what this does. Powering on. Ooh. Oh yeah, that is definitely worth the trouble. fuse, one that pops, and after a couple of minutes you can click it back in. I recommend it. Otherwise, well, here's hoping you got some good AC and some good circuit breakers. 
Now, the reason why it went from just a tiny little pathetic static shock, basically, to the arc isn't because of the extra one ferret. It's because of the resonance. Like I said, you can go Wikipedia all this or look it up, read electrical manuals, whatever it takes. But basically, it falls down to use two caps per one four. If you're running a dual mod setup, you're going to want four. Four caps. You're going to have two identical to that. Two of them are set up in parallel, along with two that are set up in parallel, totaling four. Now those two, you need to run in series. Now if you don't understand what I just said, then this is probably a little bit over your head at this point, and you might want to start somewhere a little safer. Maybe look up flyback transformers. I know there's a lot of good 555 flyback transformer drivers out there, just to get you in the door. Because that nice, big, pretty arc, that can and will kill you. Electricity is unforgiving, unmerciful, and well, anything else that begins with um that I can't think of at the moment. Unpleasant is a good one. Mostly due to the fact that Zap Boom dead. If you're lucky. If not, then, well, enjoy the burn ward. Possibly surgery and whatnot. But, that's aside the point. Back to what you all know and love and what you came here for. More arc. questions in the comments. I'll gladly answer them if I can or get you pointed in the right direction if I can't. Uh, any of the old timers, if I've made any mistakes, feel free to make fun of me and point them out. But this is as I know it. As I know. But have fun. Be safe. Be careful. Do I say be safe yet? Yeah. Be safe. And have fun you do.